Welcome to Sundry News for Monday, August 3rd. Beginning with the Daily Shapiro from this evening, do as they say. Minneapolis police tell residents to be prepared to give up personal belongings to robbers. Excellent advice. Really. I'm sure the country is not really going to shit, as it seems. Demand letter from Black Lives Matter activists to Louisville businesses lists five repercussions of non-compliance. That's not threatening at all. Pro-Trump Heisman winner Herschel Walker slams pro sports for supporting BLM. I don't think that's right. Good for him. Jersey sales for Orlando Magic's Jonathan Isaac after he stood alone for National Anthem. Jersey sales soar. Did I say that? Jersey sales soar for Orlando Magic's Jonathan Isaac's Isaac after he stood alone for National Anthem. That's good. I'm glad of that. I hope he stands firm. Dr. Burks issues new warning as coronavirus panic enters a new phase. That sounds interesting, I suppose. We shall see when it loads. Aha. White House Coronavirus Task Force Coordinator Dr. Deborah Burks told CNN on Sunday that the COVID-19 panic in the U.S. has hit a new phase as it is more widespread now and that it is essentially hitting every place in the country. So are we in a new phase of the panic? CNN's Dana, Dana Bash asked Burks. And if so, what are you going to do to change course? I think those are two very critical questions because we are in a new phase, Burks responded, and that's why I really wanted to make it clear to the American people. Burke said that responses have to be dramatically tailored to the specific areas where the outbreaks are occurring and that mitigation procedures are having an impact at the state and local levels. But I want to be very clear. What we're seeing today is different from March and April. It is extraordinarily widespread. It's into the rural as equal urban areas, Burke said. And to everybody who lives in a rural area... You are not immune or protected from this virus, and that's why we keep saying no matter where you live in America, you need to wear a mask and socially distance. Do the personal hygiene pieces. Yeah, well, yeah, personal hygiene. You know, that's kind of a standard thing. But you make it sound like wearing a mask is for protecting yourself, and that is not true. And why do we... These people need to realize that they're not just talking to old people. But more importantly, if you're in multi-generational households and there's an outbreak in your rural area or in your city, you need to really consider wearing a mask at home, assuming that you're positive if you have individuals in your households with comorbidities, Burks concluded. This epidemic right now is different and it's wide. It's more widespread and it's both rural and urban. Uh huh. Partial transcript. Blah blah blah. Going back. Protect your online privacy with ExpressVPN, and tune in to the Ben Shapiro Show. Continuing on with stuff from the Daily Wire. Ah, uh, there's that one again. Black man erupts at BLM for blocking road. I got to go to work. I got bills. I got kids. Get the fuck out my way. Good for him. I wonder what they did. Like, did it work? Was he able to get to work? I hope. All these little fuckers. Go get a job. Far-left activists go into Oregon suburbs to go after police precinct. It doesn't end well for them. Good. Watch. Texas police use horses to clear leftists off streets. BLM screams at restaurant goers. And that's good about the horses. That's cool. Probably a lot of those little fuckers are scared of horses. I'd imagine. And, oh, those, those evil restaurant goers. Huh. How dare they exercise their privilege by going to a restaurant? And Dr. Burke's issues, warning, 
just read that. Wild Alaskan Salmon, $15 off. Your first box from Wild Alaskan Company. What? Um... Ben's latest op-ed. I've read that little bit before. There's some ads. And that's it for the Daily Wire. And today we are going to try out this Louder with Crowder newsletter. A mask Nazi couple. A mask Nazi couple threw coffee at a maskless man eating a burrito. Then punches were thrown. What is with these people? that assault other people who are eating. You can't wear a mask while you're eating. I am, of course, I'm referencing the crazy lady who maced a couple who were having a picnic by themselves with nobody around in a park. And now this, apparently. There's a popular acronym that is used frequently on the social media, A-I-T-A. It stands for, am I the asshole? Some of the, these mask Nazis need to start asking themselves that. Uh-huh. Yes, good point. These students got arrested for writing outside of a Planned Parenthood in chalk. How dare they? Chalk doesn't wash off. Oh, no, wait. Yes, it does. Ugh. Ugh. Tucker Carlson obliterates Fauci for giving a social distancing pass to protesters. Well, somebody needs to talk about it. From the show, a flashback. Stephen Crowder confronts a convicted Antifa thug. What's he wearing? I don't remember this, so I don't know what he's wearing. Riots by the numbers, police casualties, and people killed during peaceful protests. Oh, yeah, so I had a brilliant idea. If I ever get viewers, like, you know, more, a bunch of viewers, and somebody happens to see this, uh, if you, if you know how to, how to, how to hack because I'm not, I'm not smart. I don't know things. But anybody who, who does know how to hack into, let's say, uh, the networks of news outlets, change, uh, make a little change to where whenever they post an article, it automatically changes the word peaceful to violent and protest to riot. Just a thought. It would be hilarious. It would be amazing. Meanwhile in Sweden, COVID cases and death plummets without a shutdown, masks, or panic. That just makes me more mad about all this shit. Okay, that's it for that. That was short and sweet. Moving on. The Daily Yahoo. COVID relief bill remains up in air as negotiations resume. Yeah, that's the Democrats' fault. Both the Trump administration negotiating team and top Capitol Hill Democrats reported progress over the weekend, even as they highlighted their differences. I'm sure. Simone Biles goes Instagram official with new boyfriend, NFL player Jonathan Owens. Just us. Simone Biles was previously in a relationship with Stacey Irvin Jr., before their split earlier this year. Okay. Florida man, once bitten by alligator, is chomped by eight-foot shark while on vacation. Oh, my. Justin Stuller is now sporting two dozen stitches and a small limp after tangling with an eight-foot lemon shark in the Florida Keys. Oh, it must be fun to be him. One of the world's most livable cities just went into full lockdown mode as coronavirus cases spike. Australia's second biggest city faces strict lockdown measures for the next six weeks as the state of Victoria saw another record spike in coronavirus cases 
six hundred seventy one in a single day. Mm -hmm. Andrew Yang has a debate warning for Trump and a bold prediction for Biden. Why do we care what Andrew Yang has to say? The former Democratic presidential candidate says Biden is licking his chops for a shot at Trump on the debate stage. Oh, I think it's probably the other way around. The former head of the FDA warned that the Northeast will likely get hit with another wave of coronavirus cases, saying the virus continues to rotate through different parts of the country. It's going to be this slow burn, unfortunately, for the rest of the year, the former FDA commissioner said. So we need to just play through. Just get back to normal and don't sneeze on anyone. It's not that hard. It should not have to be this hard. Featured new podcast episode with Lonnie Chavez from This Is Us. Uh-huh. Reading short stories for children. Ooh, what's hot? Oh, Yahoo Search. Trending now. Jamie Samuelson, Eva LaRue. I don't know why I read this. It's an obvious lie all the time. Coronavirus. Penelope Cruz, Kate Goslin. American Financing, Sebastian Maniscalco, Amy Garcia, Cheap Vehicle Insurance, Toyota Tacoma 2020. The reason I say their whole trending now list is an obvious lie is because, one, coronavirus is always at number three, very suspicious. And uh, two, yesterday I had two different daily Yahoo emails to two different email accounts with different stories, and the trending now was completely different also. Uh, presumably, I got the emails at around the same time, same day. Coronavirus was still at number three, but everything else was completely different. So, yeah, that's, that's highly suspect. Anyway, uh... Last of all, we have 1440 in partnership with Clean Cult. Clean Cult. That uh, sounds ominous. Good morning. It's Monday, August 3rd, and we're covering a social media sale. Schools inching toward reopening and arrests in Twitter's biggest hack. Yeah, well, the whole school's reopening thing has been stalled in Texas, at least. Fucking bullshit. I need to know. TikTok on the chopping block. President Trump said over the weekend he may ban the use of the social video network TikTok in the U.S. The platform's parent company, ByteDance, is the latest Chinese firm to come under scrutiny by Western officials who argue Chinese law obligates companies to share user data and network info with Beijing. That's not hard to believe. The platform itself it's focused on making and sharing short-form user-created videos typically set to music. Its popularity has exploded globally since launching in 2012. But TikTok doesn't technically operate in China. A twin version called Douyin, 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 that complies with censorship laws is available. ByteDance has argued American data are stored in the U.S. In response to the potential ban... ByteDance has offered to fully divest TikTok's U.S. operations and sell them to Microsoft, a deal the companies aim to complete by September 15th for a rumored $30 billion. More than 100 million Americans use the app. Here's why a full ban may be challenging. Because people don't follow rules? New York City schools eye reopening. Why do I care about New York City schools? The nation's largest school district submitted detailed plans to manage outbreaks of the coronavirus, with New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio saying individual classrooms will be required to self-quarantine for 14 days if a single positive test is identified. The plan, which previously envisioned one to three days of in-person teaching per week, also calls for school closures if the citywide test positivity rate, a metric that accounts for increasing total tests, rises above 3%. Experts have identified a threshold of 5%, below which states may safely begin to reopen. Well, 
New York City is, it's out of people to be infected, isn't it? Didn't they go ahead and achieve the fabled uh, herd immunity? Uh, next person identified the threshold of 5% below which states may safely begin to reopen. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, considering plans for roughly 700 school districts, is expected to make a final decision on which schools may reopen this week. The decision comes as parents across the country prepare for classes to begin this month. Some schools in Indiana reopened last week with at least one quarantine put in place. Decisions on in-person, virtual, or hybrid models vary widely from district to district. See the current status of all 50 states. And there's way too many stupid, gullible parents who are clamoring for just online you're going to ruin their children. The debate around reopening primary schools has intensified due to its impact on the economy, low-income families, and more. See how other countries have fared. Separately, the U.S. has reported 4.66 million total cases of the coronavirus, allegedly, with 154,860 alleged deaths. Arrests in Twitter hack. Three people have been charged in a massive Twitter hack, including a Florida teen who federal agents claim was the operation's mastermind. The scheme, the biggest security breach in company history, commandeered the accounts of Joe Biden, Elon Musk, Kim Kardashian, and others, encouraging millions of followers to send Bitcoin to a provided link. You didn't mention Obama. Wasn't he one of them? The scam itself was incredibly low-tech. In early May, 17-year-old Graham Clark allegedly convinced a Twitter employee he worked in the company's IT department and needed credentials for customer service tools. Once in, Clark eventually gained access to the personal accounts and private messages of almost any user. Clark, who stole more than $100,000, faces at least 30 felony charges and will be tried as an adult. He was caught in part because he used his real driver's license to register his Bitcoin accounts. See details on the investigation here. Man, what a silly mistake. Mary Poppins would be proud. Clean cult. In the immortal words of the real Mary Poppins, Julie Andrews, oh. In every job that must be done, there is an element of fun. For too long, cleaning around the house has been nothing but drab for you, your family, your wallet, and the environment. And in times like these, the products you need to keep your home in mint condition seem perpetually out of stock. Clean Cult is a cleaning product subscription company that's throwing away the rule book on how we clean. For starters, responsible purchasing no longer has to be a sacrifice. They're a carbon-neutral company with zero-waste packaging that ends up directly at your doorstep and never in a landfill. Their team of scientists has worked tirelessly finding natural ingredients that really take out the grit and grime in our kitchens and bathrooms and came across the magical power that is coconut oil. So whether you're looking for hand soap, cleaner, dishwasher detergent, bar soap, or anything in between, Clean Cult has the product for you without the environmental frets. Give Clean Cult a look today to redesign how you think about cleaning. Depending on your household and needs, they'll arrange shipments that match your preferences to keep everything freshly stocked and sparkling clean in the most delightful way. Check it out now. Please support our sponsors. In the most delightful way. In the know. Sports, entertainment, and culture. Alan Parker, iconic British film director known for Midnight Express and Mississippi Burning, dies at 76. Actor Wilford Brimley, best known for Cocoon and Quaker Oats commercials, dies at 85. St. Louis Cardinals become second MLB team to have a COVID-19 outbreak. MLB Commissioner Rob Manfred says the season is still on for now. Beyonce's visual album, Black is King, released on Disney Plus over the weekend. The film is a companion to her 2019 album, The Lion King, The Gift. 
Taylor Swift's Folklore is her seventh number one album on the Billboard 200. Science and Technology. Brought to you by In the Wild. Astronauts riding SpaceX's Crew Dragon capsule return from the International Space Station, successfully landing in the Gulf of Mexico. Mission was the first to send NASA astronauts on a private spacecraft. 3D imaging study uncovers human sperm move in a corkscrew-like motion, overturning more than three centuries of theories on sperm cell motor function. Hmm. Huh. Cool. I mean, as long as they get where they need to go, I'm happy. Sediment analysis suggests significant global cooling period that occurred 13,000 years ago was due to volcanic eruptions. Contradicts prevailing theory that a meteorite was the triggering event. Huh. No matter how prepared you are, a walk in the woods can go from carefree to disastrous in the blink of an eye. Learn how you can make it out alive if the worst-case scenario ever happened to you. Listen to In the Wild on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Business and Markets 19 countries using the euro as currency, collectively known as the Eurozone, see a record quarterly drop in gross domestic product of 12.1%. U.S. consumer spending increases 5.6% in June, rising for the second straight month. German healthcare giant Siemens to acquire cancer radiation therapy and software specialist Varian Medical for $16.4 billion. Politics and World Affairs Federal Appeals Court overturns death sentence for Boston Marathon bomber Jokar Tsarnaev ad- ordering a new trial to review sentences for death penalty eligible crimes. Panel found previous trial fell short in screening jurors for bias. I, why? It's not like there's any doubt that he bombed the Boston Marathon, killed people. Why? I, that sort of thing should just have an automatic death penalty, you know, required. That's just silly. Tropical storm Isaias briefly strengthens into a Category 1 hurricane before weakening as it passes over Florida's Atlantic coast. System is expected to move up the East Coast, reaching New York by Wednesday. Chicago homicides in 2020 soar 51% compared to the first seven months of last year to 440 Shootings also up 51%, while overall crime is down 9%. Portland, Oregon, police declare a riot late Saturday, disperse crowd around a police precinct. Protests elsewhere in city, largely peaceful, sure, as federal forces phase out presence. If it's not completely peaceful, they're still doing something wrong. Join the future of cleaning. The Interactive Advi- Advertising Bureau named Clean Cult one of the best consumer brands in the U.S. in the first year of launching. They've been featured seemingly endlessly by The Today Show, Fast Company, Refinery29, Refinery29, TEDx, and many others. Clean Cult's commitment to innovation and sustainability has changed the way people are approaching cleaning nationwide. Join in on the fun today. Please support our sponsors. Etc. One in five U.S. adults gets their news from social media. I thought it was higher than that. Landmark study pinpoints what makes a good relationship. Italy's oldest graduate survived World War II. Oh, neat. From our partners, impress your boss by suggesting this remote work solution. It's a one-step, one-stop, ultra-secure, and extremely simple way to manage Apple devices from one place. Create your free account here. Okay, what is that? Since it doesn't say... Jamf. J-A-M-F. Jamf. Now. The panic is causing a spike in RV rentals.
cool. I wish I could hop in an RV and get lost somewhere. Taste buds having wanderlust? Explore this interactive cuisine map. That sounds fun. Camels probably originated in North America, study says. Well, why aren't there any left? I bet the Indians killed them all. The U.S. Marshals are selling fire Festival swag. What? That's interesting. A pigeon hangs on for dear life as a plane takes off. Oh, my. Dumb bird. Clickbait. This German fox has amassed an impressive shoe collection. Is that an actual animal that you're talking about? Or somebody who's German and is really foxy? <laughs> I'm guessing it's probably the animal, but then I'm not, I'm not doing it. You're not going to make me click on your stupid clickbait. History book. Happy birthday, singer Tony Bennett, 1926. Happy birthday, Martha Stewart, 1941. Rival basketball leagues merged to form NBA, 1949. Happy birthday, Tom Brady, 1977. 23 killed and 23 injured in mass shooting in El Paso, Texas, 2019. When the uncreative tell the creative what to do, it stops being an art. It stops being art. Tony Bennett. Huh. Good quote. When the uncreative tell the creative what to do, it stops being art. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, that's it for sundry news for today. Thank you and goodbye.